from the visceral movements of the Earth's surface to the disasters threatening the United States' west coast. Here are nine places most vulnerable to tsunamis. Before we begin, be sure to subscribe to They Will Kill You. Hit the like button and request any topics you'd like to learn about in the comments section below. Number 9. Tsunami Tsunamis are normally caused by underwater movement of the Earth's tectonic plates. Our planet's outermost shell or lithosphere is broken into plates that move on top of the layer below due to the lithosphere's superior mechanical strength. The plates meet at boundaries also known as faults. Earthquakes, mountain building, oceanic trench formation and volcanic activity all occur at these meeting points. The boundaries are defined by the way the plates move when they meet. There are transform boundaries, where the plates grind past each other, divergent boundaries, where they slide away from each other and convergent boundaries, where they slide towards each other. In convergent boundaries, the most destructive of the group, one plate moves underneath the other, creating a subduction zone. The movement of tectonic plates causes earthquakes and a rise or fall in the seafloor. The resulting displacement of water takes the form of gigantic waves known as tsunamis. Number 8. Mega Tsunami Mega tsunamis are typically caused by a large amount of material that suddenly dropped into or near a large body of water. It's an easy experiment to perform. Take an object and let it go into a bowl of water from a certain height. You'll see that a tiny wave is displaced upwards and outwards. Its speed and size depend on the mass and shape of the object, the height of the drop, and the amount of water in the bowl. Mega tsunamis work by the same principle, only magnified exponentially. They can be caused by landslides, meteor impacts, or volcanic activity. The initial waves may reach thousands of feet and can surge to greater heights upon hitting land. For example, 66 million years ago, a meteor impacted the Gulf of Mexico and it's generally believed to have caused the extinction of the dinosaurs. It created the Chicxulub Crater, which is 112 miles wide and generated a mega tsunami which according to the latest models was almost a mile tall in its initial wave. Before we move on, it's time for our quiz question. Where did the tallest tsunami on record strike? Was it A. Alaska B. Australia C. Indonesia D. Washington let us know what you think in the comments section below and stay tuned to find out the right answer. Number 7. Japan Japan has been described as the world's leading country in terms of tsunami preparedness. Billions have been spent on state-of-the-art alarm systems, constructing high sea walls and equipping buildings with shock absorbers. That's because Japan is one of the most tsunami-prone countries on Earth, so much so that the word itself is Japanese in origin, meaning harbor wave. Some have estimated that almost half of the worst tsunamis in recorded history have struck the country. A recent example is the giant wave created by the 2011 Tohoku earthquake, the biggest quake to ever hit the country. It was a megathrust earthquake, the most powerful of its kind. Megathrust earthquakes have an above 9.0 magnitude and typically occur at subduction zones, where one plate is forced underneath another. The 2011 tsunami traveled up to 6 miles inland at a blinding speed of 435 miles per hour and reached heights of 133 feet. More than 19,000 people lost their lives. The reason why Japan is so threatened by earthquakes and tsunamis is because it rests upon a zone of extreme crustal instability. Before we move on, official They Will Kill You merchandise is now available at theywillkillyou.com. It's out of this world. Number 6. Chile In 1960, an area near Lumacao, Chile, was the epicenter of the most powerful earthquake ever recorded. By some estimates, it may have reached an unprecedented magnitude of 9.6, dubbed the Valdivia earthquake after the Chilean city that was most affected it sent 35-foot tsunamis even 6,200 miles away from the epicenter, as far as the Philippines and Japan. 
The local waves that battered the Chilean coast were as high as 82 feet. The main tsunami raced across the Pacific Ocean at several hundred miles per hour and struck Hilo, Hawaii, where 61 people lost their lives. The main reason why countries such as Chile and Peru are at such a high risk is related to the Atacama Trench. It's an oceanic trench marking the subduction point of an oceanic plate that's moving beneath the massive South American plate. More than 20 powerful earthquakes have been connected to the trench's seismic activity. Number 5. Indonesia Indonesian people are a humbling example of endurance as they're living in one of the most dangerous countries in the world in terms of natural disasters. One of the deadliest earthquakes in recorded history occurred in 2004 and had its epicenter near the island of Sumatra. It was an undersea megathrust earthquake caused by a rupture along the boundary between the Indian Plate and the Burma Plate. The 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake made the entire planet vibrate as much as 0.4 inches. It caused a series of tsunamis up to 100 feet tall, known as the Boxing Day tsunamis. Close to 230,000 people in 14 countries tragically lost their lives. Indonesia is so vulnerable because of a rather unfortunate geographical position. The country is found at the subduction zones of three main active tectonic plates, namely the Pacific Plate, Eurasian Plate and Indo-Australian Plate. It's the same reason why it has been plagued by devastating volcanic activity. Number 4. British Columbia Scientists are keeping a close eye on the region surrounding Mount Breckenridge in British Columbia, Canada. They've identified a fracture known as a shear zone along a significant portion of the mountain. To make matters worse, the mountain is located on the east side of Harrison Lake, one of British Columbia's largest and deepest lakes. Should that portion of the mountain break off, the ensuing tsunami would be devastating. Extremely large amounts of water would be displaced very quickly. The energy of the waves would be amplified by the fact that it's trapped in an inlet of the coast. Fortunately, people living in the region have been made aware of the danger and certain countermeasures have been put in place. Number 3. Hawaii Evidence suggests that in the past, landslides from the flanks of the Mauna Loa and Kilauea volcanoes have caused mega tsunamis in Hawaii. Some believe this might happen again. If they were to occur, the giant waves would cause a large amount of local destruction. It would only take half an hour for a 100-foot wave to reach Honolulu and potentially level the city. Hundreds of thousands of people would lose their lives almost instantly. Yet most researchers believe a single massive landslide is unlikely, but rather a series of smaller landslides, which would be a lot less threatening. Number 2. Mediterranean According to a study published in 2015 in the Ocean Science Journal, the entire Mediterranean region is at risk of giant tsunami waves. About 3,500 years ago, a massive volcanic eruption on the island of Thyra, present-day Santorini, generated an enormous tsunami that completely wiped out the Minoan civilization. Nowadays, with the coastlines being so populous, even a moderate earthquake in the eastern Mediterranean spells danger for more than 130 million people. Barcelona, Algiers, Naples and Alexandra are just some examples of areas that could be seriously impacted by earthquake form tsunamis. The vulnerability stems from the collision of the African plate into the western portion of the Eurasian plate, which generates underwater earthquakes. Although the quakes are less violent than those in other areas, a number of experts have pointed out how ill-prepared Mediterranean coastlines are for tsunamis. So, where did the tallest tsunami strike? If you guessed A, Alaska, then you're right. In 1958, an earthquake triggered a massive landslide in Latuya Bay. The resulting mega tsunami was a record-breaking 1,710 feet tall. It stripped trees and soil down to bedrock as it surged over the headland. Number 1. San Francisco and the U.S. West Coast The West Coast of the United States has been vulnerable to tsunamis throughout its history. The Great Alaskan Earthquake is the second most powerful natural disaster of its kind ever recorded, at a staggering magnitude of 9.2. In 1964, the megathrust earthquake sent tsunamis across 
20 countries, the tallest wave being recorded in Alaska at 220 feet. Future threats to the west coast come from a convergent plate boundary known as the Cascadia Subduction Zone, stretching from Vancouver Island to Northern California. Because it's so long, ruptures in the fault that occur on its entire length could cause megathrust earthquakes. According to current models, such an event may occur in the next 50 years, with the resulting tsunamis reaching over 100 feet. This means they devastate Oregon, Washington, and California. Scientists have described the San Francisco Bay Area as an earthquake-prone nightmare, as no less than seven faults converge there, including the San Andreas Fault. An earthquake exceeding a magnitude of 7.2 might hit the area in the next 30 years. Yet, as much as disaster movies like to tear it down, one architectural wonder seems to be in no immediate danger. The Golden Gate Bridge has been retrofitted to withstand an 8.3 earthquake, the theoretical maximum of the San Andreas Fault, and isn't at risk of being struck by a tsunami. The waves that hit the shores of the Bay Area, even in theory, would have a hard time reaching a height of 30 feet. It would take a wave at least 10 times taller traveling at well over 25 miles per hour to topple the bridge. So unless the mega tsunami is triggered by another cataclysmic event, such as a large meteor impact, the Golden Gate Bridge is safe in theory. Thanks for watching. Would you rather face a mega tsunami on the open sea or a mega thrust earthquake in an open field? Let us know in the comments section below.